Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm JT. We are here in Adobe Lightroom and I'm gonna show you guys how to make your portraits pop. So we can go from something kind of bland, kind of just meh, and take them and make them pop. Make your subject just pop off the background. Give that nice contrast between the foreground and the background and really add those layers. No flash, same photo. Let's get right into this tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and let's break down this image and see what I did to make this pop. Let's take a look at all of our tools and I'll show you guys a couple different images from this shoot. And just to take a look at the light, I wanted to change this image to black and white and show you the before and the after because it makes even more of a difference of how much we made the subject pop off the background. You can see we did that with exposure. We brighten the exposure of our subject and slightly darken the exposure of the background. So how exactly did we do that? We used masks in Lightroom, which are so awesome. And it's such a cool new tool that you can use. And you even have the option now of Lightroom generating masks and selecting your subject. So if I were to go create a new mask and select my subject, Lightroom will create a pretty darn good outline of my subject, as you can see here. I can also do some other options. I can do radial gradients, linear gradients. I can touch up my masks with a brush, select objects, people, background, sky. There are so many options now for selecting different parts of your image and doing localized editing and not global editing, which means I am localizing my edits just to this area, my subject right here. And I can go ahead, I can select my mask and I selected a subject here, automatically did all of the painting in Lightroom and it did a pretty darn good job here too. So if you highlight this, you can see it did a great job at selecting the hair and I am very content with that mask. And now you guys can see over here, my settings that were applied to this mask. Again, if I turn that off and then on, we can go ahead and I can show you without my person selected and brightness turned up and then with the brightness turned up. So basically what I did was just lift the exposure on my subject after the subject was selected. And you can see we are just brightening up our subject, almost a full stop. I turned up the highlights just a touch, give that extra little pop in the highlights and same thing with the whites just a touch and turn down the blacks a little bit just to make sure there was contrast. And another little tip here, sometimes I like to warm up the subject and just add a little bit of that warmth and glow. Not too much, you don't wanna go crazy and turn your people into orange Oompa Loompas, but we're just gonna add a couple points here in our color temperature and that is it. That is all we have to do. We had Lightroom select our subject, make these minor edits. And I'm gonna show you this other trick here using radial gradients. We're gonna bring in some of the edge of the photo. And as you can see, when we do the before and the after, let me show you again with the black and white. Take a look at our subject and then take a look at the buildings. And you can see the composition just kind of feels like it moves in towards the subject. And that's because we are darkening the sides of the image. You can see how bright the background is. We're gonna create a bit of a vignette using some linear gradients. So what we will do is we will click this plus symbol up here to create a new mask, linear gradient. You can see here, this is our linear gradient. And all we really need to do is pull down the exposure. I'll pull down the highlights a little bit as well. And then I'll kind of balance that out, make it look natural by just adding a touch to the shadows. And again, we can turn that down and then bring it back to 100% using our slider. And then we will move this right next to our subject. We don't want this to overlap on top of our subject and darken our subject, but just about there looks pretty good. Hit enter to close out your masks. Hit enter again to make all that go away. And you can see we added a nice linear gradient and if I go into my mask again, I can turn that off and turn it back on. So you can see just with our basic editing right here, basic toning, the image looks all right. However, if I start doing some masking and you can see I have a second gradient right here, 
kind of pull in this edge over here. And what we've really done is we've just created some vignette around the edges of this image to really pull in the audience's attention towards the middle, towards this third right here. That's another thing we did. We used the rule of thirds. We did a little bit of a crop. We made sure our subject was right there on that third. And I think that looks pretty darn good. Now, basic editing is just basic editing. You can see what I did here. My image was a little bit cool. So I warmed it up just a touch, around 5,000 Kelvin. Exposure, didn't do a ton to the exposure. I did it all in masks in local editing instead of global editing. However, if there are some changes you wanna make to the whole image, you can always adjust that with global edits here. I brought down my highlights a touch. You can see that was mostly up here towards these towers in the background. They got a little bit too bright and that takes away from my subject. So. I brought my highlights down a touch. Some of this was just overexposed. That's just the way it is sometimes. There were some harsh sunset light just hitting directly on these buildings and bouncing into my camera lens. So that's just kind of the way it is. I brought down my blacks a touch, add some contrast, brought up my whites, and then to smooth the skin, a little trick, bring down your texture a little bit, bring down your clarity a couple points. Ah, about negative eight to 10. I wouldn't go any more than that. Your image will start looking very soft and blah. Don't do that. Maybe negative 10 tops and then add some vibrance. And then I usually push the saturation down a touch in most of my portraits. So we're not clipping colors or hues in the skin tones, especially. Lastly, you can see here, I added my Blockbuster LUT. You can see this is a pretty cool looking image. Looks pretty good, looks pretty neutral and natural. I wanted to add some cinematic tones, some oranges and some teals. So I just brought in my summer Blockbuster LUT into Lightroom and I think that looks pretty good. We've warmed up the skins, we've cooled off the sky tones and I'm pretty happy with that. And that's really it other than a little bit of detail, add some sharpening to make sure our subject's eyes and hair are nice and sharp. And then lastly, add just a touch more vignette here to really bring in that attention towards our subject. It just darkened the sky just a touch. It darkened down here just a touch. And you can see the before and the after of the vignette. I could honestly go either way with the vignette effect since we did create our own linear gradient masks on the left and on the right. And then you can see all of the hard work that this mask did and just brightening up the exposure just a touch, less than a stop on our subject using a mask. And a really cool thing that you can do, I can hit Command Shift C, copy my settings and look at this, I can select and copy my masks over. Now, this is really cool with the smart masking tool in Lightroom. I can take this, I can select another photo here. Let's see what other images we have. I've copy and pasted this to other photos like this, for example. I use this one, I think that one looks pretty good. I've tried some vertical images to see how that would look. I think this one over here ended up a little bit better. You can see the black and white. And the color, again, here's the before, here's the after. Let's try another and just paste this because I'm gonna show you guys something really cool here. Let's try this one right here. So after I've selected this image, I can hit Command Shift V to paste those settings. And you can see it is updating the settings right now because it's updating those masks and it reselected the subject. So I can have a different subject altogether. And by pasting those smart masks, it will reselect the new subject, which is super cool. You can see in this one, it's a little bit bright. So I can bring down the brightness a little bit, but let's look at the before and the after. And again, we made our subject pop and I can just do some minor edits to these masks, but it's so cool that I can just copy and paste all of the masks you can see the before, kind of a flat image. There's some light, there's some dark, there's some contrast in it, but it's not exactly where I want it to be. And sometimes 
That's just what happens when you're shooting with natural light. I would have much preferred to use a strobe, but it was a busy city, and sometimes you just can't walk around an entire city with your entire studio. So we will rely on a little bit of smart masking in Lightroom instead to make our subject pop. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Here's another photo that I really liked. Here's the before, here is the after, and I'm pretty excited with how these re-edits turned out. I shot these images back in 2020, I believe, and just kind of found them the other day and said, I'm gonna do some re-editing on these. I'm gonna make them pop a little bit more, and then I'm gonna share this tutorial with you guys. So if you enjoyed this video, found value in it, and learned something new, please hit that like button and subscribe. And of course, share this with another photographer friend. And until next time, get out and go shoot.